Hi, this is Ogie with 4K Shooters, and I'm with my friend Carl here from Pro AV, and he's going to talk to us about the new Kinefinity Terra 4K camera. Hello. So, Kinefinity, uh, it's a Chinese camera manufacturer. Um, it's been around for a while, they've made a load of cameras. Um, we've just taken them on as their UK distributor, and we're focusing purely on the Terra 4K. So, that's this one here. At, at its heart, it's a small, modular, affordable cinema camera. Uh, it shoots 4K RAW or ProRes up to 75 frames a second in 4K using the whole sensor or 100 frames a second in 4K using 2.35 to 1 crop of the sensor. So the frame rates are really, really good on it. And then at 1080p you can do up to 260 frames a second. So you get a lot of options. Um, at its heart it's this brain. Shoots onto SSD media, so that's non-proprietary. It's 7mm um, SSDs. Um, Kinefinity make their own, but you can also get third-party ones from Angel Bird, OWC, Sandisk, companies like that. I'm guessing there's an approved sort of list in terms of yep. media that's been tested. We're, we're working on a list, and I think Kinefinity are working on lists as well. Um, but we're only really recommending on our website the ones which we've tested and we ones that we know work. The main ones I think at the moment we're recommending are the Angel Bird ones because they're they're cheaper than the things. They're very fast and they're good, reliable brands. So they're good ones. Um, so that's the brain. You then choose your lens mount that you go on the front. You've got um, EF, you've got PL, you've got Nikon F, and then you've got Sony E mount. In EF or PL, you can either get the normal mounts or you can get the ones with ND built in. That's an electronic ND, like on the FS5 or something like that. Um, or with EF, you can get what's called a Kinney enhancer, which is like a focal reducer, so it um, brings the crop factor down. In terms of sensor size, in terms of crop factor, since I mentioned it, it's a slightly smaller than a Super 35mm sensor, so it's a 1.85 times crop. So that's sort of halfway between Super 35 and Micro Four Thirds, like the GH5 and the GH5S. Um, with the Kinney Enhancer, that goes down to 1.3 times, so that helps get around that a lot. Um, but since it's a smaller sensor than we're used to, um, normally with that you'd expect to have more noise and less dynamic range and things like that, but I really haven't found that at all. The dynamic range is really good. Kinefinity say 14 stops and I've been very happy with all the footage that I've done from it in terms of the, d the detail and the dynamic range in that. And the noise performance is really good as well. It's got dual native ISO inside of 800 or 3200 um, and it goes up to 20,000 in the camera and it seems pretty usable at some high ISOs as well. It's certainly better than some of its competition like Blackmagic, things like that in terms of ISO. Lots of options, as, as, as we can see here, in terms of size, it's very small. I was actually quite, this is my second time seeing the camera. It's a pretty, uh, I w maybe, I don't know if it's correct to say that it's a very, it's a rare camera in terms of there's not a lot of them out there. At least I, I haven't not literally, anyway. at least not in the UK, but uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised to see a very small, compact and rugged build. Actually, the, the build's quite, uh, it's not plastic at all. I mean, I was expecting this to be a bit uh, clunky maybe, but uh, so that, this is very solid. This is, uh, and modular as well, so reminiscent a lot of uh, a popular brand from the States maybe <laughs> uh, I don't know I mean to me when I saw it I thought well this is a red camera no uh, to me it doesn't really compete with red cameras I mean it's it's a lot cheaper and red has the R3D files which are just an amazing form of uh, raw capture um, to me the competition here is um, Blackmagic certainly um, cameras like maybe the C200 and the FS5 in some regards um, but not in others. Um, I mean, really, Blackmagic, sort of, they have very similar mentalities. They're both trying to do affordable, small um, features which only give you the cinematic features you need and none of the rest of it. That, that kind of answered my second question that I wanted to ask is who do you see this camera kind of yeah. targeting? Uh, so definitely like C200 users or potential Blackmagic kind of uh, customers uh, looking for a, a, a pretty kind of good uh, dollar or, or pound or euro to performance ratio that you ne may not necessarily get with I mean, it depends on how you look at it from other brands, which are a lot more expensive. And I also noticed the new, the, that you're rocking the, uh, the Mini Hawkwoods uh, Vlog. Yeah. So comparison-wise, I mean, this is super, super tiny and super small. Um, okay, so price-wise and availability, can you give us an idea of where people can learn more about this camera? Absolutely. So our website, proev.co.uk, um, you've got all the packages, all the information on there, all the tech specs and detailed. We've also got the YouTube channel, which I run. So yeah. our video is going to be going up in the next couple of weeks about this. Um, in terms of price point and availability, um, the Brain only is £3,300 ex-fat, so it's very affordable. 
Um, you then got to rig it up with different packages to get shooting packages. But for a full working package, you're looking at anywhere between four grand and eight grand, depending on the, your sort of needs and requirements. Um, That's a hell of a price. I mean, for really what this thing does, and I've seen some of the footage on this show and also on at BSC where you guys had on a bigger monitor, and it's um, impressive, very impressive. Um, okay, well, um, if you want to add anything else, or no, it's all good. Cool. All right, well, thank you, Carl. Appreciate it, buddy, and uh, enjoy the rest of BV. And you guys, stay tuned for more videos from the show floor.